Welcome, welcome, boys. Okay, in this video, we're going to be using these tools to work on the Crown Vic. So, we've been kind of waiting to get this job done because I smashed my finger last time I was checking if the axle seals were still leaking on it. Put my finger someplace in the jack where it shouldn't have been, and, well, it crushed it, and it swelled up, like, twice as big as this, and it was all black and purple, and my nail was all damaged. And so we had to, uh... Get a glowing hot pick and poke it through the top of the nail and get all the blood out. And now we kind of kind of get this thing wrapped so my nail doesn't separate and pop off. And still very sensitive to the touch, but I think it's been enough weeks have passed now. I can, if I'm gentle with it, I might be able to work on the car. So, doing axle seals on the Crown Vic. I've already got the car jacked up. I did that last night. My nail popped off again, started to separate. So. I think we keep this band-aid on and keep pressure on it. it. Shouldn't do that, we hope. So, things we're gonna need, seal puller. These are going to be attached to the slide hammer kit and then we can uh, punch the seal out, slide hammer it out. And then when we go to tap the new seals in, we may have to use this tool kit, but we might not and we'll hop on over to them. And this is what came in the kit, our Velpro axle housing gasket, which we've seen in before. And we got our kit, our bearings, and our seals, which we're now going to promptly put in the freezer. So they will be nice and cold and shrunk and will hopefully more easily slide right into the axle. That way I don't have to pound it in with those tools. Okay, so first order of business is to go ahead and pop our lug cover off. There we go. 21 mil, take the wheel lugs off. for the other side. Okay. Now when you want to get the brake caliper off, I'm on the driver's side right now. Also move the left side. There are 10 millimeters that kind of hold these two deals on. So on this side there's nothing in the way, but just be aware that on the passenger side, also known as the right side, they use, board just used the same brake caliper, so then we just moved it to a different location. It's in the front, which means this arm will be in the way if the car is on stands like I have it. So when that happens, you'll have to use like a ratcheting wrench 10 millimeter to get it off the other side. So just know that. And on the left side, can use a regular ratchet but on the other side that arm will be in the way this lower control arm you can see it get this caliper off you just pull it from the bottom it'll come out and then we're gonna secure it somewhere around here so she doesn't uh, it's not hanging by the wire the uh, hose right okay and after we pivot our caliper out of the way we're gonna set it up here on the upper control arm and then we should be able to get our rotor off. Assuming our emergency brake isn't holding it on too tightly. As I did adjust it this last time. Since I had the wheel off anyway and I had been driving for a while.
care about the pinch of fingers. I know all about pinching fingers, and it is not fun. Okay. Alright, so that's all we need to do on the outside of each one at this point. We'll be able to pull the axle out once we get into the diff. So we'll just do the same thing on the other side. I'll catch you at the diff. Hold on. Alright, so we got her open, and as you can see inside here, here's what we're going to have to do. I think this is an 8 millimeter. We'll confirm that in a bit. But here's this uh, big pin. So what's going to have to happen is, I have to take this out, and when you put it back in, it will need to be Loctite back in. And then we're going to pull this out. Now, for the love of God, once this pin's out of place, what you don't want to do is rotate any of the axles. So I'll have my assistant here rotate the axle. Now? Yes. See what's happening is all these gears are moving. So what you don't want to have happen is this pin come out and then you accidentally turn the axle and then all your little spider gears and side gears are going to come out and then you're going to have a bad time. Um, so we need to get this into a better position. So I'm going to rotate the drive shaft and then when this is kind of as far up as it'll get where I can clear it and then this is more or less vertical. Uh, we'll pull that out and then we're going to gently push the axles in so we can get the C-clips off and then we'll pull the whole axle out and then we can replace them seals. Okay, so I'm holding you with one hand and getting ready to rotate the drive shaft with the other. So i got my hand on the shaft here, so we're just going to rotate it. And I think... In this position, we should be okay. I should be able to reach this 8 mil, stick my finger in here, push up on that, and then once that pops out, we can push the axles in, remove the C-clips, and then we're in business. Okay, so 8 millimeter will work. Uh, 5 16 will also work, and since I'm lazy, Five sixteenths ratcheting wrench is closer to me. You're not gonna be able to get a socket in there, so ratcheting wrench for the win. Went ahead and wiped this because I just want to mark with my little paint marker here. There we go, that's better. Just where that big long pin goes. I can get the line back up quite easily. So five sixteenths, or yeah, five sixteenths. What I'm gonna use. We won't lose it. I'll clean that up and get some more Loctite on it later. Okay. So, let's get the pin out. Got it. Alright. Alright, so after the 10 millimeter comes out, we're going to find, I think the best way to do this is kind of put a little WD-40 on here. And we just kind of tap a little screwdriver, flat blade, down in there. Now I think between that and me kind of prying on this side, where that thing's poking through. <clears throat> should be able to get this thing out of here now. Okay, I got the axle out of the other side, so we're going to try to do it on the same side the way I did on the other side. So over here, we barely even have this ABS sensor out. It's like barely even moved. But we're going to see if 
I can move it enough. Okay, this time I think we got it. Enough clearance, so we'll see right quick. Get that thing out. Just pin out. I have to keep putting it back in. So when I was messing with the axle, it wouldn't pop out on me. Or my spider gears wouldn't fall out. Alright, so if we push in, just as far as we go before we hit the ABS, I uh, still don't think it's enough. I just cannot get the C clip. Oh, maybe I can. Got it. Got it. Okay. So now we can push it back. Not move those fucking spider gears. Get the whole axle. Now, full disclosure on the driver's side, I actually broke the ABS sensor. So now we have no ABS forever. So I'll never be able to replace it because I don't know where it plugs in at. It's not like the BMW where it's a very short sensor and plugs up here somewhere. It seems to run all the way up into the car's interior. So. Ah, I got the axle. So if you don't want to uh, break your ABS thing like I did, uh, just try to pry it from the back of the screwdriver and kind of pry it from the front and bang it out as close as you can. You won't have to worry about it. But that's the whole axle. So we'll make sure that it's cleaned up around the edges here. We'll get our tools and we're going to pry out the steel. And then we'll slide hammer out that bearing. Okay, now if you want to get this thing out the, the whole full way here, uh, which I'm going to do just to inspect it to make sure I didn't crack and damage this one like I did the other one, after you pry it out of the way and kind of bang on it and pry just enough to get your deal out, I've got here a 13 millimeter. Kind of fits nicely over here, and then we're just going to drive it out. There we go. Yes, sensor out. Anti seize that. We're going to clean the inside of that. We're going to make sure we don't have that problem next time. Alright, so we got our seal puller. We're going to try to see if we can grab the old seal and pull it out. about all that boys may have to uh grab a pry tool oh cheap piece of shit all right that's it all right so this little conjigger supposed to go in here and then you kind of get in there straighten it out a bit put that on there Tighten this down so there's no play in it. And then we can attach the slide hammer and see what happens. Alright. Thread the slide hammer in as far as it'll go. So we get maximum grip. Which I guess is this far then. And we'll see what kind of damage we can do. Got it, boys, all in one go. Alright, so don't use that stupid seal puller, because that thing's a piece of shit. 
use ye old slide hammer. Alright. So we'll get this cleaned up in there. If you look in there, see at the top, that is that little nipple hanging down for our vent tube. I have already off camera pulled my hose back out, make sure I can blow through it. I even sprayed some brake parts clean through the nipple, saw that it landed down in there, and I grabbed my air compressor and blew air into it to make sure that we do have full vent so we won't have any more of them problems. Alright, clean this up. I'm going to grab a towel and a rod, go through there, clean everything out, and then we're going to put the new bearing and seal back in. So I have sitting in a freezer in the basement, so hopefully it'll be it'll just slide right in. And if it doesn't, well, then that's what we have those other tools for. And we can hammer. Alright, so I got my, my homemade towel on a stick here. So we're going to go in here and kind of clean all that out. All that oil and yuckiness that was in there. Pretty clean it out. Now, boys. Alright. I've already used my uh, brake parts clean to clean that out. So, go ahead and get our. And do this with an old one of these you don't really care about. Hell, this rag's probably 10 years old. So, this will be the last thing it's used for. Alright. So, we'll grab our. New bearing, new seal, hammer it on, and then we should be golden. Survey says, how does this beast get in? No! Alright, we will have to drive it in. That was worth a try. I. Okay, and in my particular kit, my number four, which is 59 millimeter, is the one we're going to use for this. Probably going to need to go get a bigger hammer, too, but we'll try it with just my regular hammer here. We'll see. Alright, so we'll try the dead blow hammer first. Now oh, we got a, a bigger one. But we'll try dead blow. I gotta keep it pretty centered here. Yep, just past the lip there, if you can see. There's a lip. We're just past it. So, kind of got to go down from 63 to 59 to 50, flipping different sides around so you can bash it in. But that will work. So, with that said, let's get the seal in. Okay, seal's looking pretty legit. Spring and everything looks good. That still looks pretty looped up, but just to make sure it didn't all vanish with our bearing. This shape kind of different than the other one. The other one kind of one on the outside. This one's going to be all inside, it looks. Alright. Now that we got that kind of started here, as soon as I figure out where my big one, here we go, 63. And we'll kind of drive it on. Alright, so everything's lubed up. By lubed up, I mean a 
lubed up my bearing here a little bit, so we just need to put the shaft in very carefully and very straight. Try not to rest it on that seal or that other bearing. It needs to get into the bearing on the inside of the differential. It needs to go in kind of straight. And don't forget the splines need to line up, so you're going to have to kind of turn it a little. It locks in place. So at this point, now it's going to be, need to be spun slightly until we get the splines to line up. But what we don't want to have happen is we start moving the inside and then we lose our spider gears. So I will let Katie, you will push and turn slightly to the left, either direction. Okay. And I need to make sure the spider gears don't move. So I can see it's there. You just need to rotate while pushing. Stop. You're moving spider gears. Just try to push. I'm pushing. Now turn slightly. There we go. Keep pushing. That should be far enough right there. And I'll bring you guys in to look. So now you can see the axle shaft is there a little bit. Oops, sorry, banged into the tripod. So now we can take our C-clip and put it back in there. Alright, Katie, so what's going to happen is once I put the C-clip in place, you're going to pull the axle shaft back out and it'll lock in place. So C clip is in. Okay, yeah, just pull out because I'm pushing. I should be as far out as it'll go, but just give it a little tug just to make sure. Alright, so it's not moving, right? Not really, no. Alright, good. So we'll do the same to the other side. All right, and I'll move you so you can kind of see this side. So I'm gonna have to slide over here. All right, I can't really see in there all that well, so I'll just try to hold the dip in place. You just kind of push, push and then turn slightly. Okay, stop, stop. All right, take the C-clip. In. Alright, I try to pull it. Alright, it's locked into place. Get me, I had a towel over there, some of there was semi clean. I'm gonna clean this tin. And my hands as best as possible, or my gloves rather. Alright. So because I had it marked earlier, I can now slide this pin back where it goes. So my spider gears didn't move too much. Is this supposed to move? No, what's happening is that spider gear moves slightly. Okay. I know, but I think it's okay. okay. Alright, so now that that's lined up, um, we're going to have to re-loctite this, but just for a testing purpose here. Before we do that, I just want to put it in a little to kind of lock the pin in place. Alright, so that pin's not moving anywhere. Now rotate the shaft. To the right. Either direction. Okay, and I'll rotate it the other way. So as you can see, boys, the spider gears are spinning. So everything's put back together properly. So now we're going to take that out, lock tight it, and put it back in. Okay, boys, so we have locked tight at our dude. Our uh, 5 sixteenths. And I can see in the time I was gone, gravity has moved my pin. So we will put it back. There we go.
All right, that's about as tight as I can get it. So Loctite takes, I think, 24 hours to cure, maybe. Give or take, boys. So, with that said, we will put the case back on. We're going to put our ABS deals back in. And I did attempt to repair that one. By attempt to repair it, I mean uh, take a hammer and bash it back together. And, uh, well, we'll see if we have ABS still. And if we don't, well, we'll be buying a new ABS sensor for our rear driver. But if it still works, great. Okay, so we'll just put the cover back on. The ABS sensor is back in place. And we can put everything back together. And we can probably fill the diff up a ways. Because this is at the highest point of the diff. So I can probably put at least one cord in just so I can save myself time of doing it tomorrow. But I want to make sure that that Loctite is fully dry, fully cured before we start driving around. Because that pin backs out. Well, guess what? We just grenaded our diff. Of course, I'm buying a new one later anyway, if I can find one, but still, we'd like to avoid that if possible, because I plan on reusing everything with the exception of this carrier. Alright, so we're going to put the ABS sensor back in, boys, and I already, off camera, went ahead and took a file and filed the inside of that hole out before I put this axle shaft in. And then we also took some very gritty sandpaper and then some fine sandpaper to finish it up on the outside of this sensor here. So that way it'll go in and out nice ease and easily so we don't ever have this problem again. And we're also going to anti-seize it. So if all goes well, I won't have that problem ever again. And then I won't have to snap a damn ABS sensor apart. So we'll see if the one on the driver's side survived after I bashed it back together. But if it doesn't... Not a problem. We already did what we needed to do on that side as well. We did the same thing. See, it goes in much easier now. Alright, so we will lock it in place once I figure out where my... I'll use the remnants of my anti-seize on this bolt at 10 mil. This right here. And now we can see our sensor is almost touching this thing now. I could have swore it had more of a gap earlier, but eh, whatever. It isn't technically touching, but I ain't made thousands of an inch between it. But I'll take it. Sure it works. Alright. Move on to the other side. Okay, so we got our ABS sensor back together on this side. I don't know eventually if it works or not. If not, we'll be look forward to that video coming up soon. How to replace your rear ABS sensor after you break the stupid thing because it's stuck in place like a jackass. Okay, so I guess we'll put the rotor back on. Should be able to fairly easy go, fairly easily go on. I think. I don't think our parking brake shoes will cause that much of a problem. But if they do, you can go back, unadjust them from the back side here, and then uh, put them on and then readjust them to tight. But we're gonna try to finagle it. Perfect. All right. Caliper back on. Alright, so went ahead and pressed the piston back in. I did the cap on the reservoir. And now it gets on so much more easily. There we go. All right. Okay, I've already got the diff cover back on. So you saw me do that in that other video. 396 inch pounds, crisscrossy pattern. And then this is what we're gonna put back in it, 75W140. But first we'll add a little AT205 reseal because we wanna make sure our pinion seal never goes bad. 
because that doesn't sound like fun to change. So uh, this is good enough for like five quarts. So we'll pour yeah, maybe half in here. That should be more than enough, I think. Okay, and we got our kajigger here. We're going to go ahead and put down into our diff lube. So, we'll put this one cord in today. We'll do the rest tomorrow. We'll put enough in there just so nothing gets all rusty and nasty, etc. And what I'm going to do is, now that I have this in here, actually just kind of take this guy. Yeah, okay. So once we have the tube in the diff, and this thing propped up against my muffler here, I just grab the underneath of the bottle and just press it up like this. And then it's essentially doing all the pumping for me that way. So instead of me pumping the top, I'm actually lifting the bottle. All right, boys, we got the car back together. So after pumping all that in, I went ahead and dropped it back on the ground, put the wheels back on, torqued the lugs to 100 foot-pounds. So now tomorrow, after my Loctite is 100% hardened, I'll go ahead and pump the last quart in. But we don't need, or I guess you won't need to actually see that. So we'll just end the video here. And that's how you replace your axle seals and bearings and drain your diff lube and fill it back up again on your O2 Crown Vic. And uh, always remember, don't use that stupid steel puller because it's a piece of crap and breaks before it actually performs its job. So uh, that was a waste of 20 bucks. I could use that 20 bucks to, uh, I don't know, fully fund Chuck's P.O. box and that would have been a better use of my money. So slide hammer only. Uh, don't waste your money on that. And uh, I think if there's one thing you can learn from the video, it's that. Thanks for watching, boys. Peace.